All right, so I noticed the last few days the tank has been looking slightly off. Like when you look at the tank every day, you kind of notice it. Some of the zoas started closing up. Um, I suspect the phosphate, like I showed in the last video, phosphate is kind of low. I uh, started dosing a little phosphate and today, this morning, I did another phosphate test. Looks like a 0 0.02, so it's still a little bit low. I want 0 0.03 to 0 0.05. Um, the other possibility is the new light could be a little bit more intense than I thought even though power value is good but maybe the usable uh, part of the spectrum within that par is much larger than what I had before if that makes sense. So I dialed back the light in terms of intensity last night. So today will be the full day where the light is not as intense as before. I went from about 58% intensity all the way down to like, I think it's like 48, just to see if that's it. If it is, I'll slowly ramp it back up to the, um, I guess the border where the corals are okay. And I slowly ramp back up. Uh, but for now, looks like I need to dose a little bit more phosphate. Dude, my tank must be really racked because it looks like my anemone is splitting, doesn't it? But the nitrate is sitting at 19.2, not much of a change since last week, which is fine. Uh, I'm slowly rocking it down to 15, so 19.2 is perfectly fine. So the only thing we need to address is bring the phosphate up in terms of nutrient. So something else is going on. It's not the nutrient level. Maybe, well, maybe it is. I need to bring the phosphate up slightly, but that's it. Six hours later. Neon, do you see? Right there, Aiken, not happy. Uh, I think through the week, the Mandipora, encrusting Mandipora got pushed over a little bit. They're actually touching. And I think the Mandipora actually stung the heck out of the Aiken Lord right there. So I gotta move that a little bit. I gotta move that out of the way. Yep, something is going on with the tank. First of all, take a look right here. It's definitely too rolls over to an enemy now, not just one. Uh, this morning I thought it was splitting and sure enough, it definitely looks like two. And the second thing is that, yes, more Zoas are closed up, not just the Rasta anymore. As Rasta was acting a little bit funny, but now the yellow brick road is closed up and also look at the uh, Space Invader Pectinia. It's definitely not happy. Normally it's like poofy. And over here we see the Aiken all kind of shrunken up. And a little bit earlier, I identified that it was actually Mondi Cap. It somehow slipped and landed right onto the A can. And judging by the bleach skeleton, I feel like it has been happening for a little bit. So who knows? Uh, maybe the coral is like battling and dying off and just so stressed out that it's releasing things in the water. There's Purely speculation, by the way. But I do hear that coral death has uh, has an impact, not just on nutrient level, which I did not see that in my uh, nitrate and phosphate test. I did not see any bump in nutrients, uh, but it could very well release some kind of chemical, some kind of stressors into the water that's causing all these issues and probably even stressing out the anemone where it's like splitting to survive. Or maybe it just want to split. I don't know. That part, I'm not sure if it's related. But this portion, I suspect that maybe has some kind of relation. Uh, in terms of the light, I did dial back the light, which is totally fine. Corals can do so with like uh, dimmer lights. Uh, I dialed back down a little bit, especially since the nutrients dipped a little bit as well. Uh, usually it's like if you do high lights and you go high nutrient, low lights, a little bit lower nutrient. So I'm not too worried about that. So we've moved the corals so that it gives a little breathing room. I've dimmed the lights. The next thing I want to do is make sure I get out all the uh, nasties in the water as much as possible. I would like to do a water change, but I'm a little bit too busy this week with work. And also kid is staying home from school, so I don't have time. So what I'll do instead is uh, run some purits. So based on one of the uh, most recent live stream that Reef Bomb did, uh, Keith, he does a lot of fantastic live stream and he invite uh, industry guests. And this time he brought on Kent Marine's uh, founders and uh, who owns Brightwell right now. So he explained that the purit, it's a uh, high quality carbon with some uh, resin. I don't think he actually went too much in depth on top of uh, what, kind, what, what exactly goes in here. But uh, the fact that it contains carbon is exactly what I need right now. I feel like maybe something is in the water uh, from the uh, coral battle or coral death right here. That's like stressing everything else out. So I'll just slap that on. We'll see how it goes. And I'll run the skimmer a little bit more aggressively and uh, cross my fingers. Um, so light flow, we're good. Nutrient level, we're good. The only thing left is um, removing any contaminants or chemical stuff, or chemical nasties in the water. Two 
days later. All right, Wednesday morning before work, doing a phosphate test to make sure we are on the ups and ups, and looks good. 0.04 for we in good shape for phosphate. Nitrate, I think it's probably still around 20, so I did not bother checking it. Uh, right now, I got all the replacement vials and tubes and stuff for the Mastertronic. So once I have a little time, I'll clean up all the internals and stuff like that. So hopefully that will be up and running again soon. So right now, I'm leaning heavily on the uh, henna phosphate and nitrate high ring checker to kind of keep my nutrient in check nutrient is good so corals are not in a happy place this week and um there could be a range of reason more recent changes uh the light bars the other reason thing that we discovered earlier this week is the uh monty got knocked into the a can probably for about two or three weeks at this point you see all the dead tissue right there showing skeleton so if i have to put money on anything that's probably the issue with the tank all the battle between the two corals as they're touching all the chemicals all the nasty dying tissue probably just got off and just foul things up uh nutrient once again like i mentioned things is good but the things i cannot measure is all the other like nasty chemicals that got released into the water in cases like this i'll do one or even two large water change and things just look a lot better but this week is simply way 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 too busy um this i just could not bring myself to do it number one Leon is out of daycare, so of course we have to like, uh, outside of work, we have to spend time with him as well. So um, there's already no time for anything. And I really don't want him to be around when I do like a big water change or any kind of like big maintenance because of a uh, potential danger involved as well. Of course, I can like, maybe like ask mom to watch him up in the house and stuff like that and step away for like an hour. But nah, just too busy this week. So um, next week, Leon's going back to daycare and I could potentially do a uh, water change during lunchtime or, um, right before work after I drop him off. We'll see. So hopefully uh, the tank can kind of do his own thing this week uh, until we get into next week where I can finally spend maybe half an hour to an hour to just do a quick water change. But so far in terms of uh, corals as pissed off as mostly zoas, I noticed that these guys are kind of closed up. It's already a little better compared to yesterday. Yesterday more of the zoas are closed up. And yeah, this guy looks to be open back up again. The Rasta is still kind of pissed off right there and right there. I also got some of these zoas close up right here, although I suspect this more has to do with the um, Reminda snail. That's right there. You see that like like one, one, one that sticks out right there? Flashback. Recently, I see a huge population explosion of Reminda snails. And those are those little annoying tube, the center webbings, they'll kind of bother corals and stuff like that. So I, I see a lot of little ones here and I see a big one. Uh, right by the maxima clam that I picked up maybe two months ago. So that's a big mama right there. And I noticed that as I just look more carefully, it's they're like popping up over a lot of places. And I feel like I did not see that many before. And as I started looking at videos on how to treat like Verminta snails, uh, <laughs> ironically, bumblebee snail is one of the um, natural predator of vermin the snails and if you remember two months ago i actually removed all the bumblebee snails from this tank because i found that they actually may predate on clamps for every action and reef tank there tend to be a reaction so i wonder if in the past the bumblebee snails even though they may pose a threat to the clams that i have that they are also keeping the fermented snails population under control now to top that off, I also introduced a maximum clam with a big verminted snail mama right there. And that's one thing that really stood out to me because I was watching uh, Gallery Aquatica's video. They say that, okay, if you see these like huge verminted snails, remove them because those may be the mom and they release eggs or whatever. They're basically they are machines producing baby verminted snails. So the fact that I removed bumblebee snails and the fact that I brought in a big mama without removing it, could contribute to the Verminda snails population explosion. I'm not sure if this is directly causing some of the zoas to uh, close up. I kind of doubt it because I don't see any webbings uh, around the zoas, but I do see a lot of little tubes starting popping up. So now I have a decision to make. Do I want to put the bumblebee snails back into the display tank? Right now they're just kind of hanging out in the refugium. I see them just kind of hunting around doing their thing. Uh, so they're fine. I know for a fact that the Maxima clam should be fine because it's so well 
enclosed by that little um, clam holder right there. There's no way a bumblebee snail can get to the foot and uh, find its way in. And um, the only clam that's kind of at risk is probably this guy, the Derisa clam. Because Derisa clam right now is just sitting on one of these uh, clam holder and the foot is right there. Okay, I think I made up my mind. So I'm gonna reintroduce the bumblebee snails, but I will bury the little clam holder of the Derisa clam. So at least the foot is uh, on or un slightly under the sand bed, so it's not easy access. Okay, so I guess this rambling has been really helpful. I have a tendency to do that, and I kind of convinced myself to go for the bumblebee snails. Our little dude, exile is over. Back to work, and welcome back. Please leave my clam alone. Man, look at these vermenda snail, but look at this guy. First of all, check out how the Maxima clam is not even closing fully. It went out of the water, that's kind of cool. But check out these. And this. These are the big mama vermenda snail that you really want to get rid of. At least according to the YouTube videos I'm watching, you know. I'm just learning alongside you guys. Nice and clean, back into the tank. Here is one of the uh, vermina snails. I think I got the whole tube out and I believe the snail is actually in this part right here. I'm really tempted to just crack it open to see what it actually looks like, but at the same time I don't want to. I think it's gonna be gross. And sometimes I feel like it's better not to put a face to your enemy. Um, otherwise I'll look too bad. Um, so for now, these guys, Going to trash. End of flashback. But I see that some of the zoas or pallies that was closed for the last day or two is, seems to be opening today. So I'm hopeful. Maybe the periods from Brightwell is uh, pulling out uh, some of the nasties that were released into the water. Um, or maybe it was the light uh, that was a little bit too intense. And um, earlier this week, this weekend actually, I dialed back the radions to give the coral a chance to kind of rest and then uh, I'll slowly ramp it back up. So maybe it's one or the other. Um, although once again, my strong suspicion is the chemical warfare um, and physical warfare between the Monty and the Aiken. The good news is that most of uh, whatever is happening right now seems to be affecting just the Zoas and all the other Euphilias, LPS softies, and uh, especially the SPS. They all seem to be doing perfectly fine. And in fact, the SPS uh, seems to be continuing to color up and has grown tremendously as well. Anyways, we'll talk about that a little bit later. The next day. All right, reefers, this video is gonna be a little bit short because as you're watching this right now, my family is in Willemsburg. Actually, when you're watching this, we're probably on the way back from Willemsburg back home. But one huge thing that happened is one of a local reefing friend actually had a tank breakdown and I bought some of his corals and he ended up pretty much giving me all of his euphilias as well as uh, Acan Lords. So uh, yeah, I think like overnight, the coral population pretty much doubled in this tank and it's not something that I planned for. I feel like timing wise may not be the best because as you can see, the Zoa is still not happy about something even though I think some of them is kind of turning around. But um, seeing how the issue is only affecting Zoas for the most part and also the ACAM, but as you can see the ACAM, once I move it to the back uh, this morning, it seems perfectly back to normal. So maybe it has something to do with the water flow as well. I'm still kind of scratching my head. But since Euphilia is doing well in my tank, I figure I'll buy one or two colonies, but he ended up just hooking it up. But anyways, we'll talk a little bit more about this insane coral pickup. Uh, huge thanks to Chevy for the generosity. Uh, probably in the next week's video. For now, I hope you guys have a fantastic weekend. I'll see you next Sunday at 12.30 p.m. Shop. All right, so shaping up to be a long night of acclimation and the corals moving, so...